Okay. Although the trouble is, when you get to about 38, the, the pool is hot as well. The water's hot in the pool. So what you do yes, exactly. is you, you have a cold shower. Different sort of heat though, Constantly. isn't it? So it's not that muggy, wet sort of Where? heat in Perth that we oh, get here. You do, they do get but a bit of humidity hot. there. It's although hot. they won't have much humidity there now. It hasn't rained in Perth for 17 years. <laughs> Does it? Um, I had a falafel on the weekend, Rochelle. Oh, goodness. This have is going to be an exciting story. <laughs> well, no, but it's just... Yeah, like, Rochelle, it is going to be an exciting story because I've heard it already and I can tell you. No, it's, it's... Have you got a book that you can read while he's telling it? It's foreign food, falafel, but I was going through some shopping mall or another with, with my youngest daughter, Bella, and she said, oh, why... I said, Do you, are you hungry? And she said, oh, just up at the food court, they sell these brown things for a dollar each. <laughs> and I said, oh, I'm in. That's all I needed to know. A dollar each. I mean, what can you get for a dollar? It's a good word, though, falafel. Oh, it's fantastic. That's why I thought I'd talk about it, just because of the word. <laughs> I thought, I mean, vestibule is a good word too. You can eat a falafel in a vestibule. vestibule. Anyhow, we go up to the, to the shop, which was truth be known, yes, truth be known, bigger than that, <laughs> and um, they had this container full of these brown things. And oh. sure enough, they were a dollar each. Enough? Well, Bella went up there and she said, can I have three falafels and some tomato sauce? She didn't say falafels, three of those things there those brown things. and tomato sauce. They were quite nice. But, I mean, you know, you wouldn't write home okay, about so, it. Okay, so, and the funny bit of the story, <laughs> or well, the point of the story is... <laughs> I was just going to say, they're not the sort of things you talk about on television. <laughs> <laughs> you know, they're not worth writing home about, quite frankly. All right, so I'll tell you a more interesting story. Have we got time? We've got no choice, have we? Because if I say no, you're going to do it anyway. All right, I decided, I don't know what... Are you still there, Rochelle? Oh, you just... Yeah, good, yeah. you are. <laughs> I, thought, I thought on the weekend, and I don't know why, I'll clean out the fish pond. I don't know why it wasn't oh, that dirty. Oh, So any, no. So <laughs> is there anything you've forgotten in the weather? I'm siphoning the water out of the, the fish the pond. Or before? Mm. No, I'm talking about the fish pond yard. <laughs> I'm siphoning the water. I'll speed it up. I'm siphoning the water out of the fish pond and the and the fountain, which looks lovely. I mean, there's nothing wrong with the fountain at all. I thought for no good reason. I know. I'll see if the fountain needs cleaning. And there was nothing to indicate it didn't. Is this going to have a pool? Well, yeah. I pulled the pump out and, and it had this dial on the front. It was quite large. And I thought, oh, you must just undo that. But it was a bit jammed. And I thought, obviously it's a bit jammed because it's been in the pond for a hundred years. So I got the pliers and that was the mistake. I got the pliers. Remember, there was nothing wrong with either the pond or the fountain. I got the pliers and I twisted it, obviously a bit too hard, because it flew into a thousand pieces. Honest to God, it flew into... Well, all right, if I'm honest to God, it flew into about ten pieces. Oh. And, and, and it's impossible to put it back together. But for just $500, I got a new one. It's the end of the story. It's the end of the yarn. Are you still there, Rochelle? I need just... I was thinking about there's leaving and then I thought it would be a week at There's just nothing you can say. I'm sorry, there's nothing you can say. But Rochelle, shall I tell you my little story? Come on. I mowed the lawns yesterday. Please. I mowed the lawns and I ran over something that I shouldn't have run over. Which, you know, every now and then you do. And you know what my husband said to me? Don't mow the lawns. I want a he divorce. Said, Don't say <laughs> he said, he said, if you do that again, I'm not going to let you mow the lawns again. <laughs> Now, I'm surprised you let you mow the lawns in the first place. What a stupid thing to say. I said, oh dear. He probably does okay. want a divorce. Have you ever asked him? <laughs> Have you ever sat him down? I let you mow the lawns said, again, he said. Oh, I she gee. wants a divorce from you. Is it, yeah. is it a divorce you want, darling? <laughs> All right. Yes, Coming up next. Dunedin. Where is it? Dunedin. Oh, Dunedin. 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 It's lovely. It's a very yeah. nice place isn't to go. Lovely. Isn't it lovely? Um, so it's your last week, Rochelle. It is. Oh, is that a bit sad? Well, she's going to miss you. Mm, clearly. Very much. Yeah. Mm. No, but is it a bit sad because we've got oh, a we've got a um, we've got a big do for you on Thursday, haven't we? Do, which is mm. very nice. Mm. Yes. I'll bake some falafels. <laughs> Good eye. Do you bake falafels? I don't even know. Well, you don't. But no, that'd be nice. But I suppose you've got to be careful what you eat, being in the family way. Are you allowed to she eat does. falafels? As a pregnant lady? So. Yeah, I think so. I think Fantastic. that's on the okay list. Probably yum a lot of those down, I would think. <laughs> All right, well, uh, what are you going to do? To, are you gonna, have you got anything special planned for, like, this week, being your last week? You mean, we're well, quite sitting out in the day. Bungee Bungee jumping. Day. I, no, no please. bungee jumping. I don't think we can manage that. No parachuting, no horse riding. I just thought maybe I mean, you could go to a different shame, floor really. each day and say goodbye to the staff. Because it's, <laughs> it's handy, because we do have seven floors in this building, don't we? I think, where would you start? Would you start in the basement, or would you start right at the top? I'd start maybe out on the deck of the cab, and then you've got the coffee and the breakfast supply nice and handy. Go to the important places. <laughs> All right, have a nice day, Rochelle. Okay, See you, you tomorrow. Bye. Thank you for your feedback. We've had a lot of feedback today. Must and we be have, about the police. We have a sample of that feedback now. Okay. Thank you.
Kippel. All right, I'll read mine. Uh, this one says, overall, the police are doing a fabulous job. Good on you guys and gals. Uh, why don't well, we is treat... That true? Shouldn't we wait for the report to come out? How does he know? Has he seen the report don't already? Interrupt. The report will be out these, by the end of the month. It's just an opinion. Why don't we treat these three ex-police officers as individuals? Why tarnish the good image? And they are under-resourced and overworked. The media should stop mocking the police at every opportunity because of the acts of a few. We need them. Well, we don't know if it's only a few, do we? Because the report that will be out in a couple of weeks, um, which is looking into police conduct. I mean, I, I mean, obviously it's not all of them. I mean, I saw a police officer the other day who looked ordinary. Perfectly ordinary, perfectly nice chap he seemed to be. Um, but then there was another one that gave me a ticket a little while ago, and I think he was up to no good. <laughs> All right, Big O'Connor's in La La Land if he thinks only crims are detractors of the police. Marie, I think you're absolutely right. It is only criminals. And again, I saw, I drove uh, past a police car the other day, and I must admit, this was just over the weekend, and I must admit I looked at it and I thought, oh, I wonder what's been going on on the bottom oh, of that. Oh. No, I did. <laughs> I thought, I wonder what's been going on on the bonnet of that car. And I just had a look just to see if it was, you know, just as I drove past, see if it was a bit dented or even clean, you know. And then I, I looked at the, at the driver. Okay, next. No, yeah. I did. I looked at the driver and I thought, and I did. I thought to myself, what have you been up to then, I thought. What are you, and, and he was sort of, he was sitting there in oh, his car. On. No, he was sitting Poor there in his guy. car. And he had a little bit of a wry smile on his face. Now, normally, normally I would have thought, well, he seems like a nice guy, but I didn't think that. I thought... What filth has he been up to? What's going through his mind now that he's got that right? Right, we're getting the picture now. Read on. All right, moving on. I fi and finally, I was in the cavalcade in Clyde at the oh, weekend yes. and had four f uh, falafels <laughs> in a in a pita pocket, pita 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 pocket, um, with a minty with a minty salad and a yogurt dressing. Very nice and filling. Thank you very much oh, for that. that cavalcade would have been great. I bet you had a fabulous time. That's a really good thing to do. My experience of your falafel, which is very, very recent, is that you don't need to put it in a pitter pocket. It's a perfectly acceptable meal all by you know itself. That I met someone last week whose cat was called Pitta, P-I-T-A, short for pain in the... Arse. Mm. Oh, that's nice, isn't it?